Psychological misconceptions. Number one, you only use 10% of your brain. I'm thinking of movies like Phenomenon, John Travolta, was that the 90s? Uh, Lucy, Scarlett Johansson, um, this century at least. Uh, the idea being the basic person only uses 10% of their brain, and if you could somehow induce them to use more of their brain, they'd be superhuman. They'd start by having like an iron cast memory, and then they'd start to figure stuff out the smartest people in the world couldn't figure out, and they'd read a bunch of books and they'd become expert farmers for some reason and phenomenon. Uh, and then they'd start to go into having extrasensory perceptions, right? Uh, to have this really acute empathy and be able to find people who are unable to, to speak or cry out and then have telekinesis. Um, this is, I mean, the essential plot of both those movies. And a lot of people just uncritically believe that we only use 10% of our brain. They say, they say it in the, in the movie. And what's the other one? Limitless? Is that like that too? They say it in the movie and people just take it away and have no questions about this plot device. Where I think this misconception comes from is fMRI scan. MRIs, magnetic resonance imaging, uh, your, your, your red blood platelets have iron in them. They therefore disrupt magnetic fields. And if we can surround your head with a magnetic field and get some computers to interpret what the disruptions mean, ultimately we can see where blood is in a patient's brain. Then as the computers get better and better, you can start to do this in more or less real time, right? So instead of a still picture of where blood flow is concentrated, we would get a moving picture, okay? So then we can start to have the person concentrate on a particular thing. Like, think about 32 to the power of 4. Okay, first the amygdala lights up because everyone's terrified of math, and that part is a joke. Uh, next, the parietal lobe lights up because that's where math lives in your brain. And the parts of your brain that are lit up, that show in red on these indicators, that's the place where blood flow has been concentrated in your brain. And they amount to about 10% of your brain. So the uninitiated person looking at all these brain scans could possibly be forgiven for believing for four-tenths of a second that 10% of a person's brain is active. But that's not the case. What this really means is that that 10% is more active than the rest of the brain. Uh, and this is perfectly obvious if you think about it for five-tenths of a second, right? This is going to be the most obvious thing you ever heard, actually. Uh, think about it. Why is your heart beating right now? Well, your heart beating... Well, your heart is beating because your brain stem is telling it to beat. And you're breathing because your brain stem is telling... Right? And you can see what you see because uh, the occipital lobe is processing the input from your eyes. And you can hear things and you can hear language because of Wernicke's area and so on. If only 10% of your brain were ever active at a time, then when we asked you to do a math problem, you would literally die. You would become blind and deaf and mute, and then you would literally die. And I know some people out there, the, the amygdala joke again, I guess, some people out there feel like if I ask you to do 32 to the power of 4, that you would literally die. But it hasn't happened yet. Right? Um, so that's the first psychological misconception. We absolutely use all of our brains all of the time. 